In today's tech-centered world, newspapers have started to become a thing of the past. Comic strips have gone with them. Just a few decades ago, newspapers were big business. On Sunday mornings in my house growing up, you gathered around the table with your family, reading the newspaper while your mom cut out coupons for the next trip to the grocery store. When your father got home from work during the week, the first thing he did was pick up the sports section. If you were a child, you went straight for the comics. The Peanuts gang was there. So was Garfield, Dennis the Menace, Blondie, Hagar the Horrible, and so many more. The king of the comics, however, if you happen to be a child of the 80s and 90s like me, was Calvin and Hobbes. Collider video of the day running from 1985 to 1995, Bill Watterson's comic strip was a daily adventure that followed the quick-witted and bad-tempered six-year-old Calvin and his stuffed tiger Hobbs. To the adults in Calvin's world, Hobbs is just a lifeless toy. In Calvin's imagination, Though, Hobbs is a real, talking tiger. They're best friends, Hobbs is the only friend to single child Calvin actually, but there's more going on. Hobbs represents Calvin's conscience. Whenever Calvin wants to do something mischievous, which is often, Hobbes is right there to tell him why he shouldn't. For a child, that comic was everything. Even more so, if you were a lonely child just like Calvin. It was an escape into your imagination where you could go on adventures with a friend just like you. As Hobbes was an imaginary friend to Calvin and Hobbes, Calvin and Hobbes became imaginary friends to thousands of kids. Maybe that's what Bill Watterson always hoped for. Beyond the adventures and Calvin getting himself into some sort of hilarious trouble, there was something smarter than your average comic brewing under the surface. As a child you may not have understood how to define what that something was, but you knew it was there. This comic was different from the cheesy superficiality of more popular strips like Garfield. There was something meatier going on. It wasn't until you were older that you would pick up on the themes of loneliness and commercialism. It's part of the reason why so many adults still love to read the strip today. Sure, it's nostalgic, and we love to see Calvin and Hobbes again, but we're picking up on little things we've never noticed before, making it as if we're reading the strip for the first time.
It's even more special when you look at how the comic ended and the man behind it. In 1995 Calvin and Hobbes was just as well known as Peanuts and Garfield. Bill Watterson didn't want to spend 30 or 40 years churning out daily strips though. He didn't want it to fade and become a shell of what it was, so he got out while it was still great. Watterson faded away from the public eye as well, J.D. Salinger style, never to be seen by the curious eyes of his fans. In the past two decades he has given a handful of print interviews and guest written a few comics, but that's it. Watterson had his chance to commercialize Calvin and Hobbes. He could have made millions on stuffed tiger toys alone. He said no to every request. Those Calvin bumper stickers you see are all non-licensed creations that he has nothing to do with. He was even offered the chance to turn his creation into a feature film. The temptation had to be there. There have been countless Peanuts films and TV specials. Dennis the Menace became a live-action film. Garfield was an animated series and a few live-action films we'd like to forget. Watterson, however, never gave in. Just as J.D. Salinger never wanted the catcher in the rye corrupted by Hollywood, neither did Watterson with Calvin and Hobbes. It's the best decision he ever made. Sure, there will always be that curiosity to have seen them moving across a screen instead of our imagination, to hear them speak, and watch them for 90 minutes instead of 90 seconds. Once you get past that curiosity though, there is no reason for a Calvin and Hobbes film to ever exist. There is no way it could have ever worked. Calvin and Hobbes was special to its readers in a way that other comics were not, where you read them, then went about your day. Calvin and Hobbes stuck with you. They were your friends. To adapt them into a film would have made it so that kids and the grown-ups they became would have had to share that specialness outside how it existed in our individual minds. That quickly would have diminished its magic. Because how do you create something that everyone will love when it's such a unique and very personal experience for its readers? There's no way to recapture the magic of a child's imagination and turn it into a film. There would have been so many choices to consider for a full-length film. Is it hand-drawn animation like the comics, or does it become computer animated like Peanuts became? What's the film about? What time of year is it set in? Calvin and Hobbes adventures happen in both summer and winter.
How do you settle on one? There are so many seemingly small things to consider that become big issues once turned into a film, such as how to even choose the voices for the pair when they exist differently in everyone's head. One might hear Hobbes with a childlike voice for example, others may have always envisioned him as sounding more adult. How do you compromise and create something everyone will like? It's impossible. Most of all, the strip was never meant to be commercialized. Everything becomes commercialized these days. Even Peanuts, the most famous comic ever, has become diluted as you watch the gang try to sell you insurance during football game commercial breaks. To have Calvin and Hobbes not fall into that trap only makes it that much more timeless. There's nothing more commercialized today than movies, where box office is all that matters in the end. No producer is going to care how great of a film Calvin and Hobbes could potentially be if it doesn't make $50 million on opening weekend. Calvin and Hobbes had deeper themes. Calvin may have loved violent movies for example, but Watterson used that as a comment on society. A movie would have missed the point, and would only serve to be a weak imitation of something that can never be recreated. It would be someone else's vision that I saw, not my own. They were never meant to exist like that. If Hobbes was Calvin's imaginary friend, the two were also like imaginary friends for kids like me growing up, and in my imagination is where they're meant to stay.